Hey there, faithful fans. If you're here, you're probably thinking about installing a new tankless water heater in your home or job site. I'm gonna walk you through all the information you need to know about making that decision, from installation costs, operation costs, the model, the brand, and even get down and dirty on how to size that. If you're unsure whether a tankless water heater is better than a traditional tank water heater, we have actually already made a video on that. You can find the link for that in the description. A real quick description of tankless water heaters. Whereas a traditional water heater will fill a tank with water and then heat it either using gas or electricity then serve up that hot water as it's used, a tankless water heater will heat the water as it's being used. This has the advantage of being much more efficient so that you're not wasting heat on water that's not being used while no one's home. So how do you go about selecting a tankless water heater? What options are available to you? The biggest decision to make is how it actually goes about heating your water, gas or electricity. There are a ton of factors to consider here, but don't worry, we've got all the information for you to make the right decision for your application. The first thing to consider is installation price. Gas water heaters are generally gonna always cost you more for the unit itself, and combine that with the need for a gas line and a ventilation line, an electric water heater is generally gonna save you money upfront. Speaking of installation, how's the installation process? Well, neither of them are really a walk in the park, but like I said, with a gas water heater, you're gonna need to install a gas line and a ventilation line. Compare that to an electric water heater, which just needs to hook up water and electric, it's quite a bit more simple. Combine that with the fact that at higher elevations, you might need to modify your gas water heater due to the fact that there is a decreased oxygen supply. So far, it seems like electric is winning out pretty hard over gas. So why would you ever get a gas water heater? The next big factor to consider is operational costs. When you're considering the potential hit to your electric bill versus your gas bill, it's always gonna cost you a little bit more for your electric water heater of a comparable size to a gas water heater. Again, for a comparable water heater, it's gonna cost you around 250 to 500 a year to run a gas water heater. Whereas for an electric water heater, it'd probably be closer to 300 to 600 a year. This might not seem like a lot, but it'll really start to add up over the lifetime of the water heater, which will really start to offset that installation cost. The last big thing to consider is output. Again, points probably have to go towards gas water heaters on this one. While there's a lot of variety based on model and brand, a gas tankless water heater will generally always give you more output than an electric water heater. This makes them ideal for larger buildings such as apartments or just a large home. This is by no means an exhaustive list of considerations. Obviously, there's a lot of other factors that can go into this decision, such as a concern for the environment, local utility prices and availability, and the compactness of the installation space. Hopefully this helped you make a decision on what type of on-demand water heater is ideal for your project. Unfortunately, you're not quite out of the woods yet, and there's still decisions to be made about brand and model, which we're gonna be getting into right now. First, let's get into the nitty gritty on gas tankless water heaters. Here at Pax Universe, we carry the Takagi brand on-demand water heater, which is a great unit with a wide variety of options. One of the first things you'll notice is the option for a condensing water heater, such as the TH3 model, like this one, or the TK540P model, and non-condensing water heaters, such as the TK110U and the TM50 models. Well, what does this mean? A typical non-condensing unit will force vent out the hot exhaust after heating up the water in the coils. A condensing unit will allow you to extract a lot more heat from the exhaust before it gets expelled, allowing for a higher overall efficiency. Condensing heaters can deliver up to a 95 to 99% efficiency, compared to non-condensing units, which are closer to 82 to 85%. Another benefit while installing a condensing water heater indoors is that the exhaust comes out much cooler than with a non-condensing unit. This allows you to use non-stainless steel venting pipes, which are much cheaper. However, this condensing unit isn't free and you're gonna be paying a higher upfront cost for that higher efficiency down the road. Another thing to consider is outdoor versus indoor installation. Outdoor installs are pretty convenient considering you won't have to use those ventilation pipes. And also it won't take up any space in your home. But keep in mind, you won't be able to install these somewhere that expects freezing weather. And you'll have to install some kind of roofing over the unit to protect it from the elements. Finally, we come to sizing. This is probably one of the main considerations when it comes to buying a water heater. Buy it too big, you're just wasting money. Buy it too small and you're dealing with cold showers and lukewarm faucets. Sizing a tankless water heater requires you to understand two concepts. First is GPM or gallons per minute, which is just how much your water heater can provide. I know, pretty straightforward. Where things get complicated is the next factor. Temperature rise or just rise is the gap between the temperature of your groundwater and the desired output temperature, generally 120 Fahrenheit. Rise will affect the GPM because your unit won't be able to heat up as much volume if the water that it's heating up is colder. Most manufacturers will provide a chart showing the effect of temperature rise on flow rate. We recommend referring to this information while making your final decision. We'll get more into measuring GPM later in the video when we talk about sizing electric water heaters. For now, just keep in mind that relationship between the temperature rise and your GPM. 
you can get information about your tap water temperature at your local municipal water supplier. Moving on from gas heaters, what goes into selecting an electric water heater? Electric heaters have several different subcategories to select from. The three main categories of electric tankless water heaters are whole house, point of use, and mini tank. All of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll give you a quick rundown of the differences between each one. Whole house, as you'd expect, provides hot water for your entire house, just like gas on-demand water heaters. They also provide better functionality and efficiency over their point of use counterparts. You also won't have to install multiple of them across your house, just one. Point of use, of course, is installed at the places where the water is being used. This can be a dishwasher, a shower, a sink, any place where your traditional water heater either doesn't provide adequately for or doesn't quite reach. They're much more compact, allowing for installation in conveniently small places, though they don't have quite the same efficiency or functionality as a whole house model. This DHCE Stiebel Eltron model is an example of a point of use model. As you can see, it's very compact and will fit just about anywhere. Finally, mini tanks are an interesting hybrid between on-demand water heaters and traditional tank water heaters. While they're not true on-demand water heaters, their intended installation is for places like under the sink where you would normally put a point of use style water heater. However, the small amount of stored hot water allows for a higher flow rate than a point of use model would allow, at least while the tank is full. This is ideal for a situation like a bath or a shower where large quantities of hot water at a high flow rate is desired. Now, how do we go about sizing an electric tankless water heater? Well, the process is pretty similar to a gas tankless water heater, so I won't get too in-depth into it here. But again, it relies on your desired output rate combined with the temperature rise of your input water. To calculate the GPM of your entire house or just a single outlet, as would be needed with a point of use device, take a five gallon bucket and fill it at a maximum rate from one of your outlets. Take the number five and divide it by the number of seconds it took to fill that bucket. Then multiply that quotient by 60. That number is your GPM of that outlet. Add all those outlets together, and that's the GPM of your house. Quick maths. Hopefully you remember the relationship between temperature rise and GPM that I brought up before. Again, you can get the temperature of your tap water from your local municipality, and you can get the GPM from the method that I just described. Using these two variables, you can use the graphs that are provided by the manufacturer to figure out exactly what model will be right for your needs. Let's say for the sake of example that I live in South Carolina, where the average groundwater temperature is 62 Fahrenheit. Measuring the GPM of my two showers and two sinks, which I want to be able to run at full capacity, my GPM for my entire household comes out to 4.4 gallons per minute. I also know I want to go with an electric model, and Stiebel Electron seems like a good brand for that because of the technological advantages and features that they provide. With all these variables together, I can easily go to pexuniverse.com or just look up the sizing guide that Stiebel Electron provides. Quite easily, I can match the rise to the required output, and I can see that the Temper 29 model will be perfect for my needs. Boom, tankless water heater selected. I hope this video provided you with all the information that you needed to make your selection. And if it didn't, or you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out or leave a comment down below. If this video did help you out, do us a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. And also hit that bell icon so you're up to date on all of our new content coming out all the time. Thanks, have a good one.